from WIS Politics in Madison. You're listening to Capital Chats. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a WIS Politics Capital Chats episode brought to you by Spectrum. I'm Adam Kelnhofer, reporter at WISPolitics.com. Today, I'm joined in the office in Madison by my colleague Kate Morton to talk about an interview she did recently with incoming U.S. Representative Derek Van Orden, who is taking outgoing U.S. Representative Ron Kind's place. Van Orden is a Republican, Kind is a Democrat. So, Kate, what did you talk about? Well, Adam, one of the things he mentioned was that he's been lobbying pretty hard to be on the Agriculture Committee. He also said that he wants to work hard to work across the aisle with both Democrats and Republicans. And he didn't say when I asked him whether he would support a Trump bid for president in 2024. But let's hear the rest of what he had to say. Thank you for coming on. I'm happy to be here with you, Recollect Van Orden. I think to start off, we're just going to go in ahead and talk about uh, some of the things you might want to accomplish while you're in office. So going forward, what kinds of uh, legislation might you introduce when you're in office? And what do you think the most important issues you want to address are? Well, um, three years ago, I said that the committee I'm going to advocate to get on is the Agriculture Committee, and that's the case. It's been 26 years since the 3rd Congressional District has had a member of Congress on the Agriculture Committee, and it's been about 10 years since we've had a congressperson from the state of Wisconsin on the Ag Committee at all, which to me really doesn't make sense because, after all, we are the dairy state. It bounces between our first and second uh, GDP for the state. It uh, goes between the first and second uh, GDP for this congressional district. And so my intent uh, when I'm sworn in is to get on the Agriculture Committee and make sure that uh, agriculture is seen seen for what it is, and that is food security is national security, and we need to start taking better care of our farmers. That's my intent. Okay. So, yeah, that was another thing I wanted to ask about was committee assignments. So as far as the Ag Committee, have you had any conversations about being appointed to that committee? I know um, Speaker, sorry, not Speaker yet, but possibly Kevin McCarthy will be Speaker likely. Uh, Have you had any conversations about that with him? I have. I've spoken to, uh, I've spoken to Leader McCarthy, soon to be Speaker McCarthy. I've spoken to Leader Scalise, Whip Emmer, spoken to our chairwoman, um, Elise Stefanik, and I've also spoken to Richard Hudson, who is the NRCC chairman, and about three quarters of the steering committee staff. Uh, that's how it works in the U.S. House of Representatives. And I, I plead a very strong case that we need to have ag representation for the state of Wisconsin on the ag committee. And uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not counting chickens before they're hashed, hatched, but it's looking pretty good to make that, that happen. And again, I think that's vitally important to our state and this district. Okay. So fair to say you'll be voting for McCarthy for speaker? Absolutely. Okay. I will. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting. So to paraphrase Jim Jordan, uh, who started the Freedom Caucus, uh, he said, you don't change the quarterback out who got you to the Super Bowl when the game starts. And I think that's a real reasonable way to look at this. Kevin McCarthy, um, we flipped the house because of the team that Kevin McCarthy assembled and led. That's just factual. And they had uh, 222 in uh, 2020, and that's what we've got right now in 2022. That's the, We have the same margin that the Democrats had in the house uh in 2020. So we can effectively do things, and we're going to effectively do things uh, when Kevin McCarthy gets the gavel. So moving forward, how do you see your relationship with the rest of the House delegation, particularly with Democrats and Rep. Mark Pocan, who had campaigned with your opponent, Brad Paff? Sure. Hey, listen, um, we've been reaching out Democrats since I started running for office three years ago. And we continue to do so. Uh, we're making our 19th county tour again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I've already met with the two newly elected Democrat sheriffs and then the other sheriff who's been a Democrat for a while from Jackson County. And this is what I tell them. Every single service 
my staff, anything I can do from the federal government perspective is equally available to anyone in this district, regardless of their political party affiliation. And I've been saying that for three years, but no one listened. Nobody's been listening. I reached out to Ron Kind in 2020 after I did the math on the election that evening. It was probably four in the morning. And I tried to concede the election. Ron Kind would not take my phone call. He said that he was going to his cabin and did not have cell phone coverage. Well, he did a Zoom meeting, a congratulatory uh, interview the next morning. So that's just not true. And the time for that stuff is over. Well, I've been explicitly clear. Let me finish here. I've been explicitly clear in every interview I've done that I fully recognize that 48% of the district did not vote for me. And I want all of them to understand that I'll represent them to the best of my ability and to the same level that I will for the 52% that did vote for me. And I have been saying that for three years. It's just that nobody listened. And now I'm in the process of proving it. Okay, well, to follow up on that, um, you won by four points against Brad Paff. Some Republicans have thought that that would be a bigger margin considering how you outspent him in the race. So what kind of lessons did you learn from that campaign, and what do you think you can do in the future to expand that margin? Well, let's put this into perspective. Um, I ran a nine-month campaign against a 24-year sitting Democrat. This is around kind of 2020. I ran a nine-month campaign against a 24-year sitting Democrat who was on the Ways and Means Committee, who had $3.1 million in the bank and had 100% name recognition. I lost by just under three points, and he outspent me, I think, four and a half to one on a nine-month campaign. By the way, I announced my candidacy, and they locked the entire planet down with COVID for 72 hours later. So if you want to talk about underperformance, give Ryan call Ryan kind of call back and ask him about 2020. So the other thing that people don't understand, we did our last modeling project about seven and a half months ago, and we called it 4852. So... Our numbers were spot on. I think we were 200 votes off on my modeling project. And the reason we were so close to it is because I spent, and my staff, we've driven over 180,000 miles in this district. And we understand the district from north to south, east to west. And when I say I'm committed to doing something, I am. I'm on the road right now. Again, I just met with two different uh, Democrats who were talking about the PFAS issues here. I don't care what your party affiliation is, and I mean it. So we didn't underperform. We performed spot on for the third congressional district. And quite frankly, that's what I'm concerned about, the third congressional district. Okay. I also wanted to follow up on some things about Ron Kind. You had had some concerns about my interview with him and some things he said. Have you sure. spoken to him directly, the both of you, since you won in November? No. Ron Kind will not take my phone calls. My concerns about your interview is that Ron Kine said we made no effort to reach out to him, and that's just patently not true. I sent you screen grabs of the emails. We just got an email back from them today referenced some office furniture. The election was when uh, last month on the 8th, I guess. So these things, they've been slow rolling us, and I honest to goodness believe they finally sent us that email back because of the interview and the fact that we called him out that he's been lying publicly about our relationship. So he has just not been truthful. And the time for us to sit back and allow these career politicians to not be truthful and just say stuff because they have a bully pulpit is over. We're just not going to do that. I expect to be treated fair by the press, just as I expect the press to treat everybody equally. And if you look at the coverage that we received during this campaign in 2020, that's just not the case. And that's factual. So I am focused 100% I'm moving forward, working with everybody in this district. And I don't wish Ron Kine any ill will, but he is no longer going to be the congressman for the 3rd Congressional District come January 3rd. So I wish him and Tony the best in his retirement. I guess he wants to go work for the Biden administration. Whatever he wants to do, I wish him well. Um, and it seems like he's not able to let this go. And I get it. He was in office for 26 years. And maybe he's going through some type of crisis. But, uh, again, I wish him well. And we're going to go ahead and move forward and take care of business. 
Okay, and was there anything else that you had wanted to address that he said during that interview? I know you said he'd lied about things, uh, several things. Right, well, here's something interesting. When you asked him specifically, is there any legislation that you're proud of? Remember asking that question? Yes. And, and he said, as opposed to pointing to a piece of legislation I want to talk about, and then he went into essentially his campaign speech. Do you know how many pieces of legislation Ron Kine introduced that were passed into law in his 26 years? I'm sure it's, uh, I'm not sure of an exact number, not off the top of my head. It's four. So in 26 years of Congress, Ron Kine introduced four pieces of legislation that were signed into law. That's one every six and a half years. That's a real number. And it's very easily, uh, it's readily available to anybody that looks at the House site. So this is what I'm talking about. The time for people to just say stuff and not produce is over. I'm going to work exceptionally hard every single day to represent every single person in this district, regardless of their political affiliation. I've worked with people around the world. I've lived on five continents. I've worked out of two United States embassies. I know how to get things done. And my intent is to actually govern. It's not just to talk. Uh, and I expect the press to cover me fairly. And if they do so, you know, that opens us up more to have better relationships. I believe that sitting members of Congress should have exceptionally good relationships with the press so that you can tell the story about how we're moving the country forward together. I think that's very important, that we have a good relationship, but that's got to be a two-way street. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, before we wrap things up, I know that Donald Trump had endorsed your campaign do you plan on supporting him in 2024, and do you think he could win again? Well, there's two things I'm going to tell you that I know for absolute certainty. The first first one is that Donald Trump is going to do what Donald Trump is going to do. And the second one is, I guarantee you, he's not going to call me for advice. So here's, here's what I know for certain. As of January 3rd, I will be the congressman representing the third congressional district of the state of Wisconsin. And I absolutely am going to do me, meaning I'm going to focus on what I can accomplish here in the third congressional district. National politics are national politics. We need to get back to the fact that the two people that I met, by the way, the, what, about 45 minutes ago, they're at the county board level and at township board level. So I'm going to fully integrate from the, the township level all the way up to the federal government. That's what I'm going to be focusing on for the next two years. we got to get back to the fact that my job title is representative. And there's been too many people in office that thought their, their job title was your lordship. That's not me. So I'm focusing on the third congressional district of the state of Wisconsin. And I want people to understand we can't – I don't take – when I get sworn in on January 3rd, I'll have a staff. So right now, I, I can't really help people out officially. But we're doing everything we can, all the groundwork now. And I would do, I would appreciate a little bit more help from my predecessor so that we can hit the ground running on January 3rd. Um, but that's what I'm focusing on. That's my job. It's representative. Okay. Well, as we close things out, is there anything else that you would like to add or just let people know? I would like to say thank you. Awesome. So my, Sarah, Sarah Jane and I can never convey in a single interview or the written word or even really looking you in the eye how incredibly important and how grateful we are to the people um, that helped us in this campaign. Now, I'd also like everyone to know, you know, I do have five combat tours as a SEAL. I've had about 50 of my friends killed in training in combat since 9-11. I've had about 20 of my SEAL friends, unfortunately, commit suicide. Um, due to some demons from their service. And I want every single person to understand that, that I get the gravity of the responsibility that I've accepted. There are now 750,000 people who is my sacred duty to do everything I can to protect them. And I, I take this incredibly seriously. Um, and if I'm not doing something that you think I should be doing, I want you to contact me. 
if my staff isn't doing something you think they should be doing, I want you to contact me. And my two big goals, and I'll stop with this. I want to be the most transparent member of Congress of the 435 members in Congress. And that includes accessibility. And the second thing is I want to be known as the congressman with the best constituent services of any of the 435 members of Congress, because the federal government is fully capable of screwing up about anything it touches. And I think the one thing that the federal government can do to positively affect individual citizens in the United States of America is to have a congressman's office or a congresswoman's office provide good constituent services, making sure our veterans have benefits, making sure if there's a problem to the Social Security Administration, that we can help fix that so that people can live in peace. That's what I plan on doing. All right, Kate, thanks so much for that interview with U.S. Representative Van Orden. If our listeners want to read more news about the 3rd Congressional District, they can head over to our website at wispolitics.com. But for now, I'm Adam Kelnhofer. I'm Kate Morton. Thanks for tuning in to Capital Chats, brought to you by Spectrum.